So from the network folder, I got a copy of the July 5th project. We've got index.html and my style CSS. Uh, so I'm going to open both. Now sometimes I teach too many classes, so I don't remember. Did I tell you guys this? This one weird trick to open both uh, files at once. Did I mention that before? So remember, you can select them both and do a right click on both, and you can open them both at once. So that's a quick time saver. Instead of opening one individually, you can select them both, right click both, edit. I'll probably eventually remember that I already told you that trick. So if we open up the project, I'm going to take a quick look at it in the web browser to um, remind myself what it looked like. Uh, I started to say that the uh, Chrome and Firefox browsers are both can help us check the mobile friendliness of the project in various ways. So probably we'll be checking it a little bit more often in Chrome, just like just because I like the mobile friendly tools a little better. Firefox does something very, very similar, but I believe our current version installed doesn't have the latest tool. So just to be safe, if you launch this in Chrome, remember you can press F12 to open the developer developer's console, and then once it's open in that view, we can switch to a mobile view. So here's our project, looks really nice. Press F12 on the keyboard, and that's going to open the developers panel. And what you can do here is a couple of things. One is that if you stretch this uh, column around a little bit, you may see that on the corner there's a number that is changing. Mine says 830, 820, 800. You see that on the top right corner there. That's giving you dimensions of a, of a monitor. That's going to be useful to know in a little bit. And then also what you can do from this view is if you turn on the option of toggle device toolbar, this little button right here, uh, this turned on mobile friendly view. So it'll change your view to a, like a generic mobile device. And then better yet, at the top you can, you can click up here where it says responsive and switch between different modes. Simulate as if I was in a, an, in a Galaxy phone and an iPhone phone. And if you edit, you have other phone simulator profiles as well. That'll be useful in a moment as we continue to add the mobile-friendly CSS. And then you can turn that on and off with that button. So if you get back to the code, the CSS code at the very end, what we finished, this is all of the code that sets ourselves up for a basic web view. We're going to add code to make it look nice on all devices. But what we need to do first, one thing, before the complexity is, go to your index.html. Let's go to the very top, line 5, or line 6. Give yourself a new line 6. We're going to add a new item here. Actually, let's do it on line 5, just because we've already got one meta tag. Uh, we're going to add a new meta tag, which will start to activate the mobile-friendly uh, style for our project. Just as a reminder, in the web browser, it doesn't look that mobile-friendly yet. We're going to add this line of code, and it's going to start to make it mobile-friendly. So the, the code will be a meta tag, which has no pair.
but it has attributes. So we're going to have an attribute of name, which equals something, and then an attribute of content, which equals something else. So here's a meta tag. You can make your note activate mobile friendly meta tag. The meta name is viewport. We're about to affect something, the viewport. We're going to target the viewport, so to speak, and control it with content a certain way. The viewport is the visible area in the web browser. So when I'm in the web browser, in this case, the viewport is this. If I didn't have my full mobile friendly view turned on and I didn't have developers panel on, the viewport is basically the whole web browser, excluding the title area and footer or status bar, or whatever. So this this whole thing that we're looking at is the viewport. Just like in a in a ship, we can look out the window. Technically, it's a viewport on a on a ship. So we've got a viewport in the web browser. That's what we can view in the web browser. We're affecting the viewport. And what we're saying is initial scale, initial dash scale equals one. One of the problems with a non mobile friendly website is that when you visit it in your mobile web browser, the the text is too small. And you usually have to zoom in. You have to do the pinch to zoom in or unpinch, whatever. You have to pinch to zoom in on a mobile device. You need to zoom. Here we're saying initial scale, basically initial zoom of 100%. So zoom us in already 100% when the person goes to the site in their browser. Comma. Now this is still inside of those quotes of content. User-scalable. And make sure you spell scalable correct. S C A L A B L E, scalable equals no. So we're setting ourselves up. Initially, when the page loads up, scale it or zoom it 100%, comma, and um, don't let the user zoom in and zoom out. We've already set the right zoom, comma, with. So the width of the design is set to device-width. So zoom us into 100%. Don't let the user zoom in and zoom out. And then stretch out the design so that it fits to the size of the person's device. If you check that in the browser, especially in the mobile view, F12, you should see a difference that it's starting, it's not there yet, but it's starting to get mobile friendly. Let's see, so I'm going to load it up in Chrome, F12, turn on that mobile view. Before that meta tag, everything was tiny. After the meta tag, well, it's starting to look bigger and more readable, but it's not quite conforming to the size of the device yet. That's coming up. The idea is the text isn't going to be as tiny and unreadable as it was before the meta tag. So that line in HTML is step one to start to make our mobile project friendly. So if you're taking this class, hopefully you're trying to get our certificates, you're in our major so that you can get uh, hired or do jobs as a web designer. I, I believe I've mentioned before it's a very nice job. Uh, it's got good pay. It's relatively fun. Uh, in addition to me teaching these classes, I'm also part of a company that we do this. We make websites for people. And one of the jobs that you can get is upgrading someone's website to be mobile friendly. Because like 80% of traffic on the internet nowadays is on a mobile device. It's not on a desktop or a laptop. 
it's more and more people are using a mobile device to visit websites. So the problem is some company has a website that is not mobile friendly, it looks terrible on a mobile device, and people say, I don't want to visit the site, it's too small, it's annoying. So one job to get with the knowledge we're getting in this class is make the site mobile friendly. All right, so I'm going to save that index file. That's all I really need to do on the index file. Next is going to be a bunch of CSS. Let's get back to the my style CSS file. And we'll go to the very end of the document. Let's add a, a comment here and say mobile friendly style sheets. All that we've done before that, 190 lines, has been CSS and style sheets that focus on desktop. So if you'd like to add a note, you can add a note above that, that that was desktop style sheets. Next, it's mobile style sheets. So the very first thing we do, we add a special tag. Here it's the at symbol. Right, like when you have when you're writing an email, John at Smith.com, the at symbol media space. This is a CSS uh, rule that is going to start to target devices. What is the media that the user is using to view our site? We have various capabilities such as uh, screen, we have, um, I think we have audio, we have braille, we have different ways, different media, different ways that the, the website can be viewed. We have the regular screen. So we have these different ways that the website can be viewed, so we're going to target them all. Let's make whatever device or media the person visits with our target to start to make it mobile friendly. So we'll say media all. Target all the possible media to make it mobile friendly and space. Parentheses min dash width colon 480px. After the parentheses and another parentheses, max width 768px. So this is technically known as a media query. What does query mean? Anyone know? A, a search, yeah, or like a question. Uh, this is a media query. This is a media question. Media query. So the CSS is querying or checking what media are we using. We're using all the media, all the possible devices. And we're also querying or checking is the minimum width of that device at least 480. And is at the maximum of that width 768. So when we have the developer tool here, you know how you're resizing this column, it's telling you right there this is 629 wide, this is 752 wide, this is 1039 wide, down here it's 340. These are the possible different sizes of a device. This media query is checking for a basically this basically a uh, small device, a small uh, screen. Actually, let's see. 
let's change this just a bit. Simply having it say, let's back this up a little bit. Uh, let's keep it just a min width 480, but actually uh, max width 480. So sorry about that. Be careful here. Max width. Media query for a small mobile device. So the CSS will check what's the size of the screen that we're on, that this website is on. Uh, if it's a maximum of 480, that means it's a small monitor. Right? This width is this wide at the at the widest. So the CSS is gonna check, okay we're up to 480. This must be a mobile device. Let's change the screen. Let's change the elements so that they look nice for such a small device. Curly brace, close curly brace. So this that we're about to write should all be inside of the curly braces. Here we would then start to uh, redefine um, body, don't write this yet, but body, background color, uh, red. So just as an example, you see how there was a little flash of red there a moment ago. Can't make it do it again, but there was a little red for there a moment ago. Uh, oh, there it is. You can kind of see it kind of flashing for a moment. Uh, so when it's below my threshold, it appears. And then that's the CSS over here. So what I'm getting at is that we, are, we need to now define or redefine the CSS that we've written before so that it looks better on a small device. That's the whole point of this. Is this these are known as media queries check the size of the media, then write CSS to affect those elements. So not for every single one of these, but for many of these that we've already written, we're going to change them a little bit. And one thing to do is we can do the copy and paste or simply write it again. Uh, we'll write it again just so that it makes sense. Dot wrapper. So previously we had said certain values for the wrapper if it was on a big screen. Now we're saying here's how the wrapper should look on a small screen with 100% margin, zero auto, order, none. We already defined wrapper for a big screen. Now we're defining wrapper for a small screen. I'm going to do something here that I think will be helpful. If you right click the tab of the style sheet and select clone to other view, you get a copy of the same file on both panels. I'm going to close the index HTML. I don't think we're going to use it for a little bit. So I'm just going to keep my style CSS on a left and right column it's the same file and what I can do is I can look at two different points in the same file I'm on line 200 on the left side and I'm on line 1 on the right side I can look at two different places in the same file so here I've got the original wrapper at line 25 with a 960, assuming we had a big screen. Now we're saying, no, now we have to assume we're on a small screen. So the width of the wrapper is going to change to be 100% of that small screen. We had a margin 
on a big screen of 1M at the top and bottom, auto to center it. So one space at the top and bottom on a big screen. Now we're saying no space at the top and bottom on a small screen. We had a border of two pixels solid black on a big screen. The screen is so small, we say no more border, border none. And we never specify the background color of the wrapper, so it keeps it. This is the part that's going to be confusing. There's no way to say it. This is going to be tricky. Since we did not redefine background color in the small screen view, it will keep whatever you had on the big screen view to test that we can change it in a moment. Background color, pink, some other color. Run it. Be size the size of your browser or go into mobile view to see this. We're not going to be able to test this unless you're growing and shrinking your web browser or turning on that mobile view. So look at the way I'm doing it. I refreshed it. I'm in mobile. I'm in developer view. I'm going to shrink down this column until it gets to less than 480. And then suddenly the background becomes pink when it hits 480. If it doesn't do that, let's pause. It should be doing this because if it doesn't do it at this point, everything we're doing will not quite work. So make sure that if you're under 480 wide, you, know, you don't have to have your developer console on. You can simply resize the web browser. At a certain point when you get to a smaller size, the background should become pink or whatever other color you chose. I also see that when I'm in a bigger screen past my threshold, I see a little bit of the galaxy at the top because I had a 1M top. And then now when I shrink it down to less than my threshold, I should have no space at the top because I've canceled it out to zero. Is everyone everyone seeing that? Yes.
All right, so uh, we don't need that background color. That was just there as an obvious way to see that this is on the right track. This is, this is what I often say, that when I'm trying to uh, figure out CSS, I often place some sort of background color that is obvious. You know, I often type red also, since it's quick to type on the keyboard, um, so that if it does change to red or pink or blue or whatever, uh, it is visible, it is obvious that our code is correct. So I'm gonna remove that background color. We don't need it. But again, remember this concept. Uh, we defined the wrapper initially, then we redefined it if our monitor is less than 480. And anything we don't mention is going to be inherited from where it is mentioned. Let's make a note inside the media tag, media query, um, redefine. Big screen CSS to small screen. Any code we don't mention will be inherited from where it is mentioned. I want to keep the background of the wrapper white, so I don't mention it. I could write it again, background color white. I've wasted time, and I've wasted bytes, and I've wasted effort. Although, it does make sense if you are explicit. If you also write a background color white to show that this is the white color of my project if it's on a small screen. <clears throat> so here now, we have to be careful to always be inside of that curly brace, that curly bracket. All this code that we're about to write, make sure, and we're going to do like 100 more lines of code, make sure all of it is inside of the curly braces of the media query. All of this code should only work when we're under 40, small screen. We're going to change the header. So if you look near the top of the document, we've already got some stuff we've said about the header. Now we're going to redefine the header a little bit. Height. Because of this font that I used, 11.25M seems to work well. When you change your font for when this is going to be given as a homework eventually, this is one of the things that you most likely will need to change. When I give this assignment on previous semesters, people forget to change this and their design looks weird. They chose a, a different font, and now the font doesn't quite fit in the header on mobile device, and I subtract the point. So here's your tip here. Change this. If you have a new font, a different font. It's still going to be the original Squirrel Girl graphic. You may choose to put a different graphic up there when you're on a mobile device. Since I didn't specify background, background will be inherited and it'll stay in the mobile, in the mobile view. What I am changing is give me more space on the mobile view when I'm on that size. We'll test this in We'll test this in a moment, but let's define a little bit more. Header again. This time, header h1. We're going to leave the width alone, so we won't mention it. We're going to change the height. We've got a smaller screen, so often we've, when we've got smaller screens, we need to change things up a little bit. So height, 1M, margin bottom, 0.75M, padding top, 
0.25m and font size 1.5m. Okay, so I'm changing the height when I'm on mobile view a little bit, 1m. I'm changing, uh, I, I'm le I, I started with margins of zero, so that was inherited, but then I changed the margin at the bottom to give me a little bit more breathing room. Uh, padding top, uh, I guess we could leave that one the same, so we wrote it twice. Font size, uh, I didn't mention a font size in the header originally because that font size was set before that at some point, then it was used here. Then down at line 200, we say, okay, now that we're in mobile view, we actually need a, a little bit of a larger size for our font. If you run it at this point, just to see it a little bit, I'm going to go into friend, mobile friendly view. I'm choosing one of these smaller sizes, let's say iPhone. <clears throat> I'm on iPhone view. I don't see the galaxy behind it. I'm seeing a bigger space for this header. Font's a little different. I'm making this <clears throat> bigger size here because these, they will no longer work horizontal. They need to be vertical. Home on one line, heroes on another, villains on another, about. The 11.25 that I gave you, that was with some trial and error to figure out how much space we need based on what font I used. So 11.25 works well there. If you change the font, 11.25 won't work anymore. you have to tweak it a little bit to find the right size. So maybe make a note on that. Oh, where did it change this if you have a different, yeah. So whenever you change your font, you'll have to change that most likely. So that's if you change your font for the mobile version or? For both, actually. If you change your font for the regular size version, some of these other values might not quite work either. 5M originally here on big screen view might be too much or too little with a different font. If you change your font in mobile view, that might also be something to look at. So wherever we have, wherever we had font family on the large screen, we could have had it also anywhere in the mobile friendly view, and that would change the font. Let's then start to edit that nav bar. So we've got nav. This time we're going to separate it, so we'll do footer separately. Previously, on the big screen view, we had nav, comma, footer. The nav bar and the footer were affected the same way. Now we'll have to separate nav and then footer slightly different. I need more space in the nav bar and maybe less space in the footer, so we will separate them this time. We'll say a height 8.25m. Next, footer. A height 2.25m. It's still going to inherit clear. Background color steel blue, color white, text aligned center. All of that will still cascade. But now I'm saying a height instead of 2m for the nav bar, I need 8.25m. Instead of a height of 2m for the footer, now I need 2 and a quarter. This is starting to change up that height. If you see it in the browser, now that steel blue color, which was inherited, takes up that space. And on each of these uh, four links will be taken up, will take up the space. The footer also 
has been changed up a little bit. But it should it should change the header definitely. We're going to work with all of these bullet points now. So we've got uh, nav ul, nav list item. So nav ul, margin zero, padding zero. Take away any space that might have already been there. We had some space before. One quarter M above and below of padding, and now we're saying no padding. Yes. Zero is a special case because everywhere else we have some sort of unit, M's or pixels or whatever, or percentage. The zero is a special value that it always means zero of anything. Zero M, zero pixel, it's everything. So we don't have to put a value or a unit that is, the value is zero, the units are everything. Okay, so then we're going to say, let's redefine the nav ul list item. Previously, we had those bullet points become inline so that we have them on one line. Now we're going to do the opposite. Display inline does one thing, and its opposite is display block. Change them back to taking up one space, its own block. Border dash right none. We had a cool little divider line on each bullet point. The opposite of adding something, in this case, is to put none. <laughs> Sometimes the opposite is to put a zero, sometimes the opposite is to put none, and sometimes the opposite is completely different like this, inline versus block. And it goes on a case-by-case -case basis, but this is why going through the book, hopefully, you know, even though we're doing the class together this way, hopefully you have or will look at those chapters that we haven't looked at together because that will lay it out much more. When is it none? When is it zero? When is it block or whatever? It depends on what attribute or CSS you're affecting. So to nullify a border, in this case we put border right none. We're then going to change that padding right and padding left, which will be down to zero, both padding left. Here's a new one, line height, 2m. We had not defined a line height before. We had, it had either been set, we had either, either set it somewhere in our code be before that, or there is an inherit built-in line height that we thought was fine that we never had to specify. Now that we specify it, we control it how we want. We need 2m uh, height between each line in this nav bar.
Okay, so then we're going to uh, change up the nav list item a tag. This one also needs a display block and then a little padding 0 space 0 0.25m. So we've got each bullet point technically. Then we've got each link in the bullet point. This not block, block. So display both has a block and then give me a little bit of space at top and bottom nothing but left and right one quarter of an M. So when I look at it in the browser by now, we should start to see that each of these is taking up its own line. That I still got my effect of that hover, which we need to take care of. Now these are going to appear on their own line. That makes much more sense for a mobile device. Uh, the width of my uh, navbar originally wouldn't work on a mobile. Now on a mobile device, I need it to be like that. Eventually the homework will be to take this project and you're going to change it in various ways. And when I give the assignment out, people decide to make a, f a fifth link. And that's perfectly fine. The problem is then they don't change the CSS and they get points deducted. Because if you don't change the CSS, your fifth button will appear here somewhere. And if you've got white text on a white background, I can't see it. Minus points. So this fits in this size because of the CSS we've written so far for four links. If you add a fifth link, you're going to need to change some of these heights. You're going to need to change the height that was listed right here, first of all. If you've got a fifth link, that'll probably be like 14.25 or something. You've also got these other heights that have been tweaked a little bit, such as this nav height. Because if I add this up to 15, for example, what will happen is I have the space, but that blue doesn't continue. Well, the blue continues because of this height. And here I might have to play a little bit with, OK, I went from 12 to 15. That was 3 units. Maybe if I had 3 units here, 11, it'll cover what's expanded. No, it has to be a little bit more. I have to play with it a little bit. So keep that in mind. You will get deducted points if you add more elements to the nav bar, but you don't fix the CSS. The whole point of this chapter is a big focus on CSS. So make sure that stuff works when you do the assignment. OK, so here's one that we did not work with at all before, but now we need to because we're in a mobile view. Uh, this is nav list item colon first dash child. We had, we had a colon hover. We said the state of hover of a link. When we hover over any link, do the following. We have these other lists of like 10 special states. There's hover, there's visited. They all start off with this colon. We had also a special one over here, first letter. Here's another special state. The first letter of this paragraph do the following. There's one, first child. So basically the first one of this list. We're targeting this list of bullet points. Specifically, let's target the first bullet point. We also have last child target the last bullet point. And I believe we also have a way to target the even ones and the odd ones. So there's this really advanced way to select your elements. Uh, this one is targeting the first bullet point. 
I want a border dash top, a little bit of design, one pixel dashed midnight blue. The nav bar at the moment looks fine, but what I want to do is add some design that at the top and bottom of the nav bar, I'm going to uh, add a border, a simple border. There it is before, there it is after. It's kind of small, but you should see a little divide, a little dashed line at the top. And then we're going to add one at the bottom in a moment. I also want to take care of this uh, hover, the hover state. So here's the part where we need to redefine what we've already written for a hover a dash on. Now here's a spot where you can save yourself a little effort, but, but be careful here. I need to redefine, we need to redefine a hover a LinkedIn. Why not copy that and paste it so that we can change it? It's okay to do the copying and paste here, but here's where the problem will happen. I'm going to copy, in my case, I'm going to copy line 89 and paste it over there. And I'm ready to go, right? I copied this line, curly brace. I didn't copy the curly brace. Oh, there's the curly brace, right? Yep, that's the curly brace for the media query. If you follow that back, it goes back to the media query. We need the cur we need one more curly brace here. is you click on the curly brace and it should then highlight its pair. Okay, so uh, what we're changing here is a background color. Uh, no, actually background color stays the same. We're changing uh, the border. So we had border top left radius and top right radius. Here's another spot where you can do a little copy and paste. Why not select the border top left radius and the top right radius? We're going to change those. I had a 15 and a 5. I want to nullify those down to 0. Don't give me any roundness. In this case, the opposite of yes, adding roundness values is saying no roundness values, zero. And then I'll add box shadow, none. Looking at the CSS, it often seems that when there is some sort of various or several values, the opposite of that often is to put none. Where there's one value that we're affecting, oftentimes the opposite of that is zero. And then there's special cases where we had display inline and display block. View that. We no longer have those little roundness corners, which don't make sense, or I don't like them on a mobile view. Here now you've got the wide bar. On a mobile device like this, the, the hover state doesn't exist. So if you put your mouse over it, you don't get a hover. That's normal. There is no hover on a mobile device. But it cannot detect that your finger is hovering over something. But 
if you're not in mobile view and you kind of resize this you can still hover over there although again there's no hover state on a mobile device and when you're on device you won't see it because what what it represents is that little circle that's your fingertip to, to click We need to start to target next the section, the main visible area of the project. So section.blog. Previously, we had float left so that we can make a left and right column. We no longer want left and right columns. So this one's one of the weird ones. The opposite of float left is clear both. When I wanted to start to make columns so that they are on the same line, we floated them all to the left. But now we don't want columns, so clear that so you have no more no more columns. So a note here, opposite of float left. Section section dot block we originally had a width of seventy percent, but now because we have no more right column, it will be grown out to be a hundred percent. We had a border right because we had a right column of one pixel. Now we'll say none. We don't want a right column, a right side border anymore. We have no more right column. And we used to have a padding of right of 1M to give us a little bit of breathing room. Now we don't need any. So you see how we're taking what was previously written and redefining it because of being in the media query of, of a small device. To remind ourselves, because it's very easy to lose track of this. But this final curly brace is related to the media query. I'm going to write a note right here. This is my this is the end of my media query of 480. End at media query for 480. That way, hopefully, I don't forget and accidentally use that curly brace. If I do some copy and paste, and I copy the opening curly brace, I'm gonna forget the ending curly brace. But if I give myself that note there, hopefully I read my note, and I tell myself that's not the ending curly brace of the code you just copied. So case in point, back on line 106, we've got section dot h2 top. I'm going to copy it as well as the margin, because I need to redefine section h2 top starting with the margin. So I'm going to copy that. Actually, a more efficient way to copy it is only copy this part. I'm going to redefine these values, so don't even select them. Just start selecting margin, go back to the beginning, copy that. 
paste it, and don't forget to close the curly brace, because that curly brace is not a closing curly brace for H2 top. I'm going to copy that, paste it, close my curly brace before I forget, and then fill in my value here. Finding this originally, basically zero. Take away all of this stuff that I had to do for that, just put it all back down to zero. One M zero zero zero, that is zero on all sides except the top. Yes? So you do in section S you tell you that the space between them does that matter? No, there is a space. There is definitely a space there. Oh, okay. So how about the block? How come there's no space there? There's no space there because that one's a different case. We have here with no space, we're saying there is a section somewhere in your HTML with a class of dot block. So remember in our HTML, we have section, ID, I mean section, attribute, class equals a uh, block. So we're saying there is a section with that class. Here we're saying, go look in the section, and some element is going to have h2 top. And that element was an h2. So to be more specific, we could have written this section space h2 dot h2 top, that class attached to that h2. But here we're just saying, anywhere in the section, any element that has an h2 top, do the following. So we've changed our margin. Uh, font size, we had a 2M before. We're going to change the font a little bit. Font size, uh, 1.5M. And then text dash align center. That one's new. We weren't, we weren't centering our H2 on the big screen. I didn't want that. On the small screen, we are. We're changing the size of that font at the top, and then we're also aligning it. So here it is before I refresh. We're targeting this element right here before it was aligned to the left by default. And there's a little too much space. Now that I've changed that code, there's a little less space at the top of it. It would work as well. You could copy, the problem is how much to copy. You could copy all of what we've already written, all 190 lines, mm -hmm. and paste it in the media query. Then you'd have to be, then you have to change everything. Yeah. So you could do that. But notice the problem is on some things, you have to hit margin, margin, check. I didn't touch font family. Font size, font size, check. But then I need a new one, text align, which I don't have there. So there's no easy way to do this, unfortunately. Although as a beginner, it is helpful. Yeah, you can copy everything and put it into your media query, but then you're still going to need to tweak it a lot to make it look good on a mobile, because you just copied code that was all targeting a big screen. Yeah, and this is one of the ones that's just going to come from practice. What do I change? Again, this is coming from an example in the book where they've already figured out the whole thing based on the chapters that, that we got up to that point. right? We, we did chapter 10 together, then we skipped all the way to chapter 15, I think. So if you do go through 11 and 14, it'll give you more of the idea of like what do I need to do via CSS. When we get to chapter 15, which is this project here, then it goes even one step outside the box because then now we're dealing with mobile device code, bars device code, and that honestly just takes practice. So um, the more you do it, the more you practice, the more it makes sense. But this that we're creating at least, 
when we're done with this project, we're going to have a very good project as a starting point for many future projects, even outside of this class. You want to make yourself your own website about your own resume or portfolio, whatever? I would start with this project. And if you understand how this works, you will be able to create a website that look, will look good on all devices. You just fill in your content, your colors, your font, your pictures. So next up, we're about to edit the, the article. Um, here's an example. Let's You can copy the whole article. There will be a few things to change. So back from line 112, I'll copy the article, paste it. What I would change is I don't want that comment anymore. Clear both. Um, we can leave it. Width is going to be 90%. And then a padding of 1M. This is the case where I've already said clear both. Technically, I don't need to say clear both again. It will inherit it. So I would prefer to remove it, clear both. I've already defined it. It's going to inherit it. I need to redefine width, so I do. And then I need something new, padding. Whatever amount of padding that already existed before was fine. Now I either need more or less based on what I want it to look like as I test it. And 1M is fine. Article figure. Let's copy that whole chunk. Article figure. Now here's an example that's annoying. I copied. I copied article figure, and I pasted it. And when I pasted it, I aligned it all weird. Article came in right, but then all of this aligned wrong. The shortcut to align everything at once. The shortcut is when you select everything, you can tab all of those at once to move them how you you want. So in my case, everything came in slightly off alignment, which of course the, the alignment doesn't matter. White space doesn't matter. Um, but I want it to look nice, so copying and pasting, you might have to tweak your alignment a little bit. Okay, so article, article figure. We have the picture on the left, it's text on the right, two columns. Float left to make those two columns. What did we do a little while ago that nullifies the two columns? Clear both. Good, so we'll clear both. No more columns. We don't need a picture column and a text column. The picture's going to take up its own space. So clear both. That's the opposite of float left. Next is it's tweaking a bunch of these widths and such so that it looks good on a mobile. Uh, we had a width. Previously, we had a, a width of the figure of 290. Well, that value was fine for a bigger screen. It's got the space. Here, because we've got a smaller screen, we'll have to deal with percentages. So we'll say 95%. Uh, stretch out the picture area so that it takes up 95% of the space instead of an exact 290. I had a margin of 1 all the way around. Now we'll say 0. Don't take away any of that space. I need all my space. Previously, we had 1M on all four sides, but then on the top, 0. Now we're saying margin of 0 everywhere, but now on the bottom, 1M. So previously, when I had 
uh, 1M everywhere, 1M was too much at the top, so you said zero. Now that we're on small screen, one everywhere, or zero everywhere, but at the bottom, make sure that's margin bottom, one M, no space below it. Padding, we can leave that. That padding is a good amount of padding for big screen and small screen. So either leave it, or we can remove it because it will be inherited. I would prefer to remove it personally just because of the experience that I have that I would like to remove that because I know that that's already working because it's already been defined up here. You can leave it if you want. As a beginner it might make more sense but I'm gonna remove it because I've already defined padding before. Redefining it doesn't doesn't do anything. It just takes up bytes, it takes up space, it takes up memory and RAM and all of that. Might as well remove it to save up a little bit and be a little efficient. Same thing with this border. I'm going to keep the border still when I'm on a big screen or a small screen, meaning I don't need to mention that border again. If you want to change it so that it's like two pixels, dashed, pink, that's when I would then change it, making it different when I'm on a small screen. I want it the same on big screen, small screen, so I'll just remove it. On a small screen, I actually like a border radius to be a little larger, 10 pixels. Checking it on the browser. The image got a little bit larger. The roundness got a little bit more round. The text moved below the picture. It's not, it's not, uh, we're not quite there yet. You see here, uh, I've got, if I kind of count it, that does look a little bit, let's say 10 pixels there, and that looks like it's 12. That's okay for the moment. Mine is, mine is like that also. It's not quite centered. We're still getting to that. Next, um, we're going to target the, the image. So I'm going to copy article figure image. In this case, I don't need the width. I'm already stretching the image 100% to fit inside of the figure. I'm going to remove width, but here's where you can change the border radius. Let's see here, border radius. I think in a small screen, 25 pixels is a little big, so I'm going to bring that back down to 10. Small screen, not so round. A big screen, more round. Seems to look good. It was already defined. Back up on line 128. You said whatever, wherever there's an image and a figure in an article, 100 percent. You don't have to say it yet. It'll inherit it. Okay, um, we have article figure caption and article H group. I'm going to copy both of these. I know I'm going to change them. So copy the article figure 
big caption and the article H group. Copy them both. Don't forget the curly braces. The only thing I want to do with the article figure caption is I would like the the text center. I don't need to change the size of the text. So we'll remove font size and then somehow we can figure out a way to make that text be centered. Then that article H group We need to add to it, clear both. It's no longer part of a two column layout. Clear both. Then we'll change maybe this a little bit right here. So clear both so that it doesn't take up two sides anymore. And then we will do margin. Um, top of only one M. So after after the feed caption of center, the text now is centered. The earlier picture. That's easy. And then H group clear both, so that it's no longer two columns. Top one M. I brought this a little closer. It was one and a half, which looked better on a big screen, a small screen, a little bit smaller. Now let's pause to do a little thing here in the browser. Um, I'm in I'm in Chrome. Uh, I've activated the mobile device view. In my case, I chose the Nexus 5X just to just to have something to look at. And um, okay, it's mobile mobile view. I'm a, I'm kind of like on a mobile device. And this is going to be very helpful for you as the um, as you think about how should I change this when it's the assignment because I want to choose my own colors or whatever. If you turn on this little check mark, this little arrow here, you click that, and then you click on something, for example, featured posts. When you hover over things, they'll highlight. But then when you click, got selected. And I see here's the HTML, H2, with a class of H2 top. And then I see on my styles here. Here's where then you'll start to see things crossed out, and they'll make more sense now. Reading this right here from top to bottom is specific to general. Element.style means any inline style that was written on that element. Meaning, if I had style equals something, it's empty. That's good. We usually don't want inline style. Next is some CSS. Next is some more CSS. This has been crossed out. Section, space, h2 top. Written in your style sheet file, line 106. Originally wrote this margin and this font. Now they're crossed out because this is more specific. So from top to bottom, most specific, scrolling down, least specific. And now look at that. In line 258, in the media query, it detected this screen is less than 480, so this code kicks in. And this code is kicked in and redefined the margin, so that one was kicked out, crossed out font size, text align. So font size was crossed out because we redefined it here. So this is telling you what was the code before, mobile friendly, 
And what was the code now? Mobile friendly. And I'm showing you this also because when you do the assignment and you choose different fonts and, and add different things, you might have to tweak some of this. And these values that I've given you of margin one is perfect for this font. But now what you would have to do is click inside of one of these values of a property and change it a little bit and figure out actually need 1.25. So you can go in there and type 1.25m, and you'll see it dynamically, 1.75, or 0 0.25. You'll see it changing dynamically in the browser, figure out what it is, and then you go to Notepad and edit line 258 to apply that directly. This is all temporary. The web browser refreshes, you lose all your changes. So you refreshed it, it all went away. So what you, what you can do here is make your quick value changes. You can even press, depending on the value, you can press, I'm just pressing up and down on the arrow keys here. I've selected a value, it's moving up and down. You can even do something like that. Negative values. Doing increments of values, you can't do that with the arrow keys. But I do this all the time, that I'm trying to figure out what are the right dimensions and margins or whatever. Go to the, I go to the console view here of the browser, I select with the selector some element, and I start tweaking these values. I try to figure out those values before I write them permanently. And I use the up and down arrow key so many times, it's so valuable. But again, it does not do fractions, you have to type 075 or whatever. So maybe, a 025 is better than what I had before on line 258. Line 258. At a 1M, maybe I, I like 025 instead. I'm going to leave it as is, but hopefully this is making sense about, you know, the web browser is not just an interpreter for your code. It has this really powerful built-in developer's console for you to understand your code, play with CSS, look at it in mobile view. A few years ago, you'd have to download a separate plugin to add this to the browser. Now every browser has this, Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Edge, Opera, Safari, everything. Everything, all the browsers have this, a way for you to quickly test code. Let's see, we finished Article H group. Uh, next comes Article uh, First Letter. This one, um, we only need padding and font size. So what I'll do is I'll copy the first select elements that are right next to each other. But I want first letter, I want padding, and I want font size. But there's no way to select it. So uh, the compromise is I have to select this much, for example. I need to remember to close that curly brace. letter is 10 pixels, 5 pixels, 0, 0. So more space. And remove that float. And then font size, 4M. So you could have selected all of that, but then you'd have to remove float, you'd have to remove color, you'd have to remove font weight. I only wanted padding. Font size. More space on padding, bigger size on font. So 
So as we go through our code, we're getting closer to the end. We've got a few things to do regarding aside. So we don't need to clear the throat on the first letter? No, we're going to keep it. It's still, um, in this case, we're going to keep it because it, it's still serving the purpose of creating supposedly two columns. The, that whole first letter is, is this, making that first letter stand out. So it doesn't exactly look like two columns, but it is left column, right column. Okay. So we still want to keep that one floating left and right. I still want that effect of the drop cap. Mm -hmm. All right, so all of that article. I'm not going to mention anything about Article A. I still want all links in an article to be orange-red. I'm not going to redefine Article A hover. doesn't even matter. There will be no hover on a mobile device. Just leave it. So I'm skipping all of those. Next, we're going to Aside. We're going to deal with some of this Aside stuff. Um, I see a float left there. We will take care of that. So uh, copy that Aside, that Aside rule. Opposite of float left, clear both. The width of that right column used to be 25% because we had the other percentage of the left column. There are no more left and right columns, so stretch it to 100%. We had some padding on all zeros on all sides except the left. Well, there's no more left and right columns, so that one's going to be 0 also. What's a more efficient way to rewrite line 299 there? 298. Just one zero. If it's 0 on all four sides, one zero goes to all four sides. We're going to add one thing here. Text align. The default default in every HTML page is align the text to the left. We never wrote text align here, so it kept the built-in default of the browser, left align text. We now are saying, in the aside, align our text to the center. And if you view that in the browser, you'll see after the articles, the main section, You'll see the sidebar centered. The links of there look nice also because those were inherited. Center text. I would like a um, a line or a little bit of visual design that separates the word um, that separates the the text a little bit. So I need a border. Let's see. So we've got uh, a a side section A display block, etc. Move each link to its own line. Uh, let's. Uh, I, I'm only going to copy the first starting point of that. I'm going to redefine the look of, of any of any links in the section of a side. Uh, I don't need to redefine all of this, so I just need the first line. Copy and paste that after the aside. Close the curly brace. All I want to do here is change um, the design of my dividing lines. We have a solid line dividing each bullet point, each link, that is. It still needs to be block for each one to take up its own space. 
this amount of padding on the four sides is fine. I don't want any underline, and I want the color to be orange-red. But I'm changing the border. In mobile view, my border bottom will be one pixel dashed midnight blue. Made it a little darker. purely cosmetic. I could have left it alone and not changed anything there. I could have written nothing at all in that aside section A and the previous design would have looked just fine. So you don't need to redefine every tag when you're in a mobile view. Just like we skipped, we didn't need to redefine article A and article A hover. Last thing here, uh, aside H2, I'm going to change the padding. I'm going to leave the color, leave the font, leave the font size, but I'm going to change the padding of H2 These paddings, I'm going to put them all to zero. <coughs> I'm going to check the result. I just tighten up the space a little bit. I brought this a little closer. Here's the project. Possibly. Um, actually, there's no minus uh, values of padding, but we might have to do minus values uh, for, for something else. Uh, but here's how we might figure that out. Uh, I'm here in the browser, and I've turned on this selector element. If I hover over some of these things, you know, if I hover over, I haven't clicked, but I've hovered over recent posts, I'm seeing that the element has some built-in space, and I'm seeing probably a margin or a padding. So that's something that's taking up some space, but there's still some other space above that. So it might be that I need to change the values of the H2 there, and possibly some values up over here. So this element, the blue in, in Chrome, is how much is inherently of that element, and then there's some amount of space there. Well, I, I believe we put one M around all of those sides. So I have to go back to whatever that is and change that to maybe zero, and then maybe go to this one and change that to zero. So the point is it might not be one thing that I need to change, because all of this is a big puzzle piece that interlocks. So I may have to change more than one part of the CSS. So in this case, now that I have clicked on it, this is article, and this is saying, OK, in your article, you put a padding of 1M all around. I might need to then change this and say, Padding 1M all around, space, padding dash bottom, zero. So, where are you here? Are you this seems to be possibly part of article, because I highlighted the article. And what I would, I would kind of tweak this. 
or play with this, I would try adding padding bottom zero. So here in the browser, I'm trying. What if I add path padding bottom zero to article? Still not close enough. Okay, so I'm gonna do that, and maybe I need to select the recent posts. Okay, so it might not be padding. I already got that down to zero. If I start putting negative values, nothing will happen, probably. Padding goes along with what else? Margin. So I might start to add here margin, top. Let's start, just to be obvious, 5M. So it makes it really big as I decrease those. Margin zero. Zero, yeah. It seems to be margin zero as well. So that, that was a longer answer. It's two things. I, now I think it's too close. But I had to change the article margin bottom to zero. Then I had to change the aside h2 margin top zero, which I think is too close. And that's going to tighten up that space. Sometimes it's really easy. It's one thing to change. Sometimes it's two things to change, because they all inter interlock. So you're saying the margin top, but I just saw something here. This looks nice, but this doesn't. So that is also an H2 in the aside. And this value of 0 looks good here, but then now it looks terrible here. You see this complexity. This is, this is not a mistake or anything, but logically it makes sense. I've got an H2 twice. So everywhere there's an H2, in the aside will be changed like this. So maybe just the best answer would be to to leave alone the H2, the aside H2. I would leave that alone and I guess a better solution in this case is to target the the um, the article of margin bottom zero or padding bottom zero. Brings it a little closer, but not so much. Still some breathing room. It does not affect this one and this one. There's no, there's no short answer. And the last thing that we'll do here, then we'll we'll wrap up for the day. The uh, I f I f we forgot one little thing here, but it reminded me. Uh, so down here under recent posts, these these links here. They've got this dotted line that looks nice. Uh, I wanted to do the same thing up on top over here to divide up those elements. I forgot to do that. But this, uh, I want between each of these to be dotted lines like I've got at the bottom. So we have to back up to where we defined those. Each of these links, list items. That's back on line 228 or so, where we've got nav ul list item. Order dash bottom, one pixel dashed. White. back up to where you've got your uh, nav bar list items. So we're saying for each bullet point, do the following. And one of them is put a border at the bottom of each one. So the first one, uh, second, third, fourth. So here's the first one, border at the bottom, border at the bottom. So it looks like there's one between each one. But technically, there's just one at the bottom of each one, one down here too get this little dotted line in between each one for uh, so that it looks like that there's a division. That was related to this one. I guess we should put this one to white, actually. We did do the first child. It's very subtle. Let me, uh, let me remove it just to show you this. You see here, if I 
don't have anything on the first child. My first item looks like this. You see the you see the dashed. All of these are saying at the bottom. So all of these have a one at the bottom. It looks like it's got it at the top and the bottom. That's because the one at the top has it at the bottom. This one doesn't have it at the top. So that's how we've got the first child. Target the first bullet point with the border top. We had it midnight blue, but I think white looks better. If you want to, you can change that one to white. For the moment, we'll wrap up at this point. I'll put my code in the folder here. Uh, we, we have this mobile-friendly uh, small size, but we haven't dealt with other sizes of devices yet, like tablets. Just one moment, like tablets. So uh, if you were to view this on an iPad or look at the other Android tablets, doesn't look good. It's cutting off. Well, that's because the iPad has a 768 width. We've written CSS to target anything that's below 480. Next, we need to target devices that are between this value and that value. Remember at the beginning of the day, we were accidentally writing min width and max width. So we're saying the maximum width was 480. But we haven't said what happens between 480 and up. That's coming up next time for tablets and such. Question, yeah, sure. So by default, um, I don't have like, the tab highlighted on the navigation bar. OK, uh, let me check you one moment. So you're saying this first one is not highlighted? No. OK, check that your uh, HTML has, has this right here. Check that your HTML on, the, on that first href has a class link on. All right, everyone, so that's it for the moment. We'll be back tomorrow, and we will do the other mobile device dimensions.